Okay, so I'm just going to show you a few tricks. So this is the direct draw method that I mentioned, where you just draw through the back of your paper. Like that. Do that. So these are just an example of some of the lovely marks you can make, which are really unique to this method. And they're a bit, a bit like sort of dry point or soft ground etching marks. They're quite nice and sort of velvety. And it all depends on the amount of pressure put through the back of the paper. You can also use all kinds of implements. So for this, I've used um, a palette knife, just scraping the ink off and then pressing the... And then, um, so some just drawing through the back of the paper and putting pressure in various places. I'm going to try and make that a bit... Another example of pressing slightly harder, and if I put them, I put it side by side, you can see the difference in just with the pressure of the marks. You get really lovely, rich black tones. And then by using the pencil very, very heavily, you can say, this is a comb mark put through it. Go a bit Picasso, mm. and this a lot of this is done just by rubbing to get the tones. I kind of it's a little bit similar to probably using charcoal as well. And this is one where you can mix a couple of colors, but these are all drawing through the back, it's direct draw method. So that's the examples I did earlier. Let me show you how I do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is just take my plate and just draw pencil mark around it. And that just gives you a guide, a registration guide. And then put my paper just loosely over the top and just make a hinge with some masking tape. And then you can just flip back and see what you've been doing. Keep turning and keep looking. And then the next thing, pick up. I suggest if you are doing it, you just take some dirtier paper just to ink up on. And so you really don't want too much ink for this method. If you put too much ink out. You're, you're, if you just go black, you won't, you won't get enough de definition out. Do that again. Give that shape. Use that ink for a while. It's the watery. You need to cover your plate evenly. A little bit of rolling out, so you want a nice even roll, but a fairly thin. Transferring your plate. Putting it in the register. And the thing about this method is, is to try really hard not to lean on the paper because as soon as the paper touches it, obviously the ink is going to transfer. So it's to try and keep your hands off the paper. So I'm just going to make some marks to show you some marks. So draw in with the pencil. And you can just 
just have a look at what you've got from that. I've actually put too much ink on that. So that's that's to show you how you shouldn't do it. I put too much ink on because my ink, I didn't shake it up properly. So I'm actually going to do that again. So that's not showing you. This is actually a block printing ink, which I don't use. I need bowl based etching ink. Using this because it's like what you've got. So you can also draw your design in the back, the guide, or you can even just photocopy or print out a picture that you like or something, and then you can just draw over the back of it as long as it's on a Actually, photocopy paper does work very nicely. So I'm just going to roughly put that down. Again, I still have quite a bit too much ink. I'm not used to this ink, I'm afraid, but I've got some nice marks kind of that have come through over there. If you start actually just really heavily shading the pencil. And then you can take a comb, best if you can snap off a bit of comb so it's not quite so start putting some more marks in the cone. You draw with the back of the paintbrush or a biro or really any implements that you can think of. So we'll say that one I'm going to change inks in a minute because I don't like that ink very much. Do another one. Show you. And if you're still working with the same colour, you you don't have to actually um, clean it thoroughly. You can just wipe off the excess and roll up again. Oops. That. Let me get my other ink. Now I'm using um, some etching. So it is worth spending a little bit of time just smoothing it out. Um, you probably see that there's a blobby bit still so that needs to smooth right out and you can hear when it's the right amount of ink um, by the sort of stickiness that the roller makes and if it sounds super sticky and you've got much too much ink on the sound it's making now is about right And for this, I'm actually just using um, ordinary photocopy paper, which does tend to work quite well with your hand you know, printing.
always end up doing florally things when I'm doing this, but I don't actually do my own work. Again, a bit dark, this is why it's coming out so dark. So I'm going to offset that. And the other really nice thing you can do with this is you can do what are called ghost prints, which is literally you do one print and you leave it as it is and you just put another piece of paper down and you get another print and you can keep working both things as you go on. You kind of switch from one to the other. last I've taken the ink off and you can see what you should get so that's that's more like it and you'll pick up these other areas of ink without putting your hands on it but that's kind of what makes it nice you can start doing some shade And then you can start applying some pressure fingers. You can see that makes some quite nice marks there. And then you can go on and keep going to more and more implements. got quite a nice dark area from doing that. I'm going to unmute you now. We can unmute ourselves yeah. if yeah. you want. I think I've just unmuted you. No, I unmuted myself. Yeah, I just allowed you to unmute yourself. So if you want to unmute now. Do you think acrylic ink is better than oil? Acrylic ink doesn't actually work very well. You can buy... Um, no, I've, just, um, I've just done it and I've drawn my paper. Pardon? I've just done it and torn my paper. <laughs> oh, because it's stuck. Yeah, acrylic. I was just about to say that acrylic does tend to stick. You can buy um, a drying retardant for acrylic, and that helps. That makes it a lot better. But they are just so dry, it is very difficult to get them to. Um, I think the heavy body acrylic works better. But um, these are very good. They're, um, what are those? And can you show the label? Can you see it now? It's oh, upside down. It's upside down. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, yes. They're just yes, like, you get them from um, Great Art online. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And they do a decent range of colours. I've just got two of these. But that was the first um, demonstration was in that. But I think, I don't know whether I didn't shake it properly. I haven't used it for a while. But they do normally work a lot better than that. But the best ones are... Um, these are proper etching inks, but you can get um, etching inks that are water. Um, you can clean them with water, so they're, they're a lot less toxic. But I do tend to use the um, oil etching inks on that. So, but you, you can see the really nice range of um, marks you can make. Okay, was anyone trying that? Or? I, I did, but I only had acrylics, and therefore my paper tore as well. So I couldn't... Uh... It does stick a bit. Have you got a water sprayer? Have you got um? Could it be more? Have you got one of these? Just a. Uh, I, 
Is that no, kind of help with it? You spray that. And have you only got have you only got acrylic ink? Because you don't have any other ink. I've only got acrylic paint. That's the only thing I've got. We've got some water based ink, but uh, that doesn't really work. No. Does acrylic ink work? No. <laughs> No, it doesn't. It doesn't really. I mean, I have done some in acrylic. I was testing it out, and I did. I did get it to work. But what paper are you using, Hugh? You know? Oh, it's just printing paper. Is it very thin? Like, it's very thin. Yeah, printing. Yeah, like, like like photocopy paper. Yeah. Yeah. That's why mine tore as well. Yeah. I mean, you either. I don't know. You could try it again, working really, really quickly. Just just give yeah. it a very quick go. Um, What's the ideal yeah. paper? Um. Well, for so doing it by hand, I actually, just a very thin drawing paper, a very smooth paper, and no more than sort of 90 GSM or something. Or mm -hmm. photocopy paper, you know, if you don't want it for any lasting purpose, it doesn't have to be archival, yes. then photocopy paper. And the other thing that does work very well is, is newsprint. You know what that is, it's just this very thin, slightly off-white paper. What about sugar paper? Um, it might do. I haven't actually ever tried that. Um, maybe it's um, smooth. It does work, but it's a bit too porous, isn't it? I was going to say, it's a bit absorbent, so I don't know whether it would just suck all the ink up too much. Um, it might work with oil inks, but I don't think it would work with acrylics at all. Um, Did you say oil paint? Oh, you could one. try oil paints. Um, Again, there is a medium that you can add to those to make them more into printmaking um, things. But you, if you've got some oils, you could give that a go. That probably would work better than the acrylics, I think. Oh, right. Because I, um, I did put in the list of things that you won't get a particularly good result with acrylics. You do the um, block-based inks. Can you tell me what you what's the best thing to use to ink up? Uh, ink up on, onto? Yes. Well, the best thing is, is this Perspex. Just Perspex, a piece of okay. But if you don't have that, you could use mm. a piece of glass from a frame. Just be careful about the edges. If yes. not you could just put masking tape all around the edges and then that will protect it. So that, that's, that's good. And, and also not to sort of bang the roller too hard on it because it could crack it. Yes. Or you could use a piece of aluminium mm. or a... It's flat, uh, like a household tile, like a bathroom tile, as long as it's flat and it's not like got a bevel pattern on it, something like that. Mm -hmm. You can also, I haven't tried this, but you can um, put cling film over a piece of card or, or silver foil and, and pull it quite tight and you could probably roll up on it. Oh. You could try that. I've not tried it so far. I encourage you to do that. Um, have you ever tried that jelly stuff? Jelly print? Oh, that's a, yeah, that's a different thing. That's a jelly plate, which is a different thing. Mm. Um, you can buy them. You can make them as well. They don't last that long. Um, and that's very much... You ink that. You can use acrylic on those, actually. Mm. And you ink them up. Um, you press um, textures into them and lift it off. And you press paper into it. And you get quite a nice result from that. But that's another another method. Mm. I don't. I have tried it. If you don't have a roller, can you use the back of a spoon? Um, you could mm. use a paintbrush and paint it on very thinly. Um, a roller obviously would work best. If you don't have a roller, yeah. Sorry, did you not hear? I, um, you could use a paintbrush, quite a wide paintbrush. If, if you don't have. A yeah, if you don't have a roller, and you, know, you, and you, you can't me. use the back of a spoon to brush it, uh, to press um, it. Uh, well, I'm just going to come back to you. I can't. Um, no, I think the best thing would be to put it on with a paintbrush. Can you all hear me still? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It's all fine. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Yeah, if you if you put it on very thinly with a paintbrush, the back of the spoon would would not be um, it wouldn't make it even enough. It would blob too much. You'd get ink collecting in, in various places. Mm. So it would really work as well. Mm. But um, or you could try putting it on with a rag as well. That mm. might work just by using an old rag and just go back to mm. our.
I think I missed out. I missed out when you you said the where you can use. You can't use acrylic. Can you use the watercolor? No, watercolor wouldn't work very well either. You could try uh, the near the best thing. The nearest thing would be to try oil paints. That that might be oil the best paint. way. Yeah. Oil so paint. you could try. In fact, I'll give it a go now. This might. With oil but paint. you know the, the rollers are very cheap. You can buy them online. They're only sort of about five six pounds each, and you only need one. So I'm just going to try that as you ask. So I've just got a rag, and I'm just going to try. Yeah. I'm only going to do it on a bit of the tape because I'm not sure. So I'm I'm just trying to sort of smooth it out as best I can with a rag. Yeah. Let's see if that works. I did it the other day. A As ink, did you use the oil? Oil, this is the, this uh, is oil paints. Yeah, this is the oil. oil. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And, and I think that's you, if you stick to that. Um, yes, the oil's better than the acrylic. I just worked that one. Sorry, the oil is much easier. It's, oh, it, I it, yeah, I mean, yeah. Was, was, was that ordinary oil, you know, like painting oils? Um, it, it's, see, it's not tearing anyway. <laughs> Yeah, oh good. Did you catch the bit with putting it on with a rag? Yes. I, yeah. For the first one I did it with a brush yeah. and that wasn't very good, but the second one was with, with a rag and that was better. Yeah, the rag actually does seem to work quite well. I'm quite pleased yeah. with that because I've never tried that before. So mm -hmm. thank you, whoever asked the question about what else you can do. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> so um, I'll try that. The next, the next thing I was going to show you was just drawing directly into the plate. So I'm just going to ink up again. But the, um, the thing is not to put too much ink on. And I, I think the main difference between printing inks and oil, oil painting inks is printing inks are a lot stiffer. Mm. I'll just roll that up again. And of course, if you wanted to be quite careful about it, you would cut a little mask to go around here, and after you've inked up, you put that around so it doesn't, all of this doesn't pick up on the edges of your paper. I'm not going to. So for this one, I'm going to actually just draw directly on the plate, oh. make marks, yeah. and then take a print of it that way. So, And for this, you need to sort of remove a fair amount of ink so that you get the contrast. And you can try and um, lift off ink with different textures, like you know, bubble wrap, just pressing. Always lift as well. It's quite nice to pop it. Try some textured wallpapers. Are the police coming for some bits of card and just make 
noi no. Now I'm not trying to do any kind of design here, I just want to show you as many textures as I can. And again, there's, you know, for the wallpapers, it needs, they need to be quite, um, uh, what are they called? Those, um, Embossed. Embossed. Yeah. And those, and then you can just draw directly in. Use um, back of the brush. You just need to make sure it's removing the ink, and you can see. You're not muted, I can hear you. Oh no! <laughs> Just to let you know, in case you're going to be rude about me. So sorry, we had to go because we had this big bang and a pigeon. Um, flew into the window, oh, no. the window. So it just left its whole imprint on the window. It was like, oh, so we were just making sure it hadn't I'm gonna fallen. I'm going to rush out and do a print of it later. Yeah, do a print. <laughs> <laughs> it makes nice marks, I'm sure. Yeah, they do. Yeah. 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 It's all right. Anyway, he's, he's gone. Yeah, sorry about that. Okay. <laughs> Is the pigeon okay? Yeah, it seems to be. Well, it's not there, so it must be. Yeah. So I've just made as many marks as I can think of, but you know, you can use, oh, and the, oh, the other thing is really nice to use is, is um, cotton wool buds. Oh. So they sort of take away with quite a lot of really nice to use about with. that well you can still make a hinge so that you can see where it is but if you want to work back on top of it so I didn't press too heavily on that I could have actually pressed it down a bit more but you can see the range of marks that you can get that hopefully inspire you to um, so this was the palette knife which because it collects the ink on the edge of the knife mm. it kind of these nice marks in there. I like that. This was using the comb, just drawing into the back. Bubble wrap didn't really lift it off that well in that instance. You can see some of the wallpaper is pressed in. But if you get wallpapers with really heavily embossed um, leaves and things like that, then they can work really well. Quite nice. So that's the second method. Just drawing your image into the plate and then rubbing on the back. And then, of course, you can combine the two. I can put this back down on top in the right place. And then I can just draw again. You've got that. So it's got, it's kind of got endless possibilities. You can go on forever going backwards and forwards just on one piece of paper. And then adding colour which is the next thing I was going to show you. So is anybody actually doing that at the moment? Because I'll give you some time to finish. Can I just ask, could you use, yes. um, you know, the bottle ink that you use for Chinese pictures, Chinese? Um, Again, I haven't tried pen. that, but I would have thought it's it a bit thin, isn't it? Too quickly, I think. And, and I think it, it would be too watery as yes. well. Is it quite liquidy? Yes. Yeah, no, that, that wouldn't work because you need something stiffer to stick to the plate. Mm. And you can also um, you can also lift off the plate with rags and just make quite nice marks with the rag marks. It's really all about mark making. Sometimes, oh no, when, if you're using a water-based, you can spray it and it will kind of dissolve it but this is oil so it won't mm. work so what? i would use white spirit on this and then it will just give you some like splattery effects so, um, i'm going to clean my plate and give 
Who, is anyone actually doing this? Yeah, I've done that. Do, do you want some more time to do a little bit more of it, or, you, or should I move on? I'll move on. going to clean my plate so no actually I don't need to I can just so I've just drawn the design on it. see that the sunlight's just come over it the blind better. Okay, that's a bit better. So I've just done a very rough design, which gives you a guide when you're doing two colours or you can see where you've been, you've taken away and what you're adding. to draw around the, the plate to give me a guide. Huh? You don't have masking tape, you can use sellotape, but just make sure you have a bit extra on the edge of the paper so it doesn't rip it when you dirty hands. Actually, going to put some gloves on. Some oil. So, when you draw your design on the plate, you need to draw it on the back of the plate, otherwise, it might transfer onto the paper. So my little message is I always write, so I've drawn that on the back and I write ink back to front so that I know when I'm ink, we'll read ink and that's the right side to print, if that makes sense. Start with a really nice cab cabinet yellow, deep. So obviously, if you're putting a very dark colour on your plate, you won't be able to design that way. You can hold it up to the light after you put it up, and that's sometimes. That was very silly. I forgot to change rollers. Sorry. Um, These are called um, the Matrix yeah, SD, these rollers. And I think this size, the smaller one, I think they're about six pounds. These are about eight fifty. And you can get them from Jackson's online or Great Art uh, or Amazon actually sell them as well. The lovely thing about printmaking is sometimes you get happy accidents, which I've just made one because I forgot to change, I picked up the wrong roller, so I've kind of got to blend the, um, the cadmium deep and the black that was left on the plate. It's quite nice. So now I can start with some rags. I can just start taking away maybe some of the background. And if you leave the actual marks of the rags in rag for the wiping made, you create the nice marks. The uh, tricky thing about this is to keep your fingers off the edges where you want to leave the ink. So I'm going to turn that round because I can now put my finger there where I've wiped it. Otherwise you get things. So 
So you do get a completely different results when you do mono printing through a press, which is how I would do it. Colours will be a, a lot stronger and sort of flatter. For example. Leave all those nice marks, or you could wipe them away completely. Much Precise. So what I'm doing is just taking away all of the orange background so that the second colour the background. If I want to be a bit more precise, I can use the cotton wool bud. The Maybe find it, go back to the cone. The other thing you can do is you can just use the cotton wool bud cut some ink another colour and spur another colour to without having to ink up a whole nother sure direct Make sure that's back in the register mark because when you're using two colours, that's a bit more. So then, just using the heel of your hand, applying even pressure right up to the side. the start print then you can change colours bear with me I just need to clean this black off I'm going to change to a blue are any of you doing this Can you still all hear me? Yes. Because oh, you're very quiet. <laughs> well, I think we're muted. So 
going to get a little bit of white spirit to get that on. It's difficult to do it while you're doing it if you've never seen it before. Yeah, the, uh, the idea really was for me to demonstrate and then you can do it afterwards. I was going to give you time to do it. But um, whatever works for you. Then I'm going to use some turquoise. Do that quickly. I'll pick up some of the other. Just spend time cleaning in front of me. It's the thing about printmaking; it is a really messy job. Always a lot of cleaning to be done. If I was super rich, I'd employ a cleaner to clean up. now so I just use the plate without the design now because I just want to show you what happens if you just purely put another color on top of it and don't do anything else to the second color Thing about the mono printing method is where the, the colours cross over, so obviously that's gone rather dark because I didn't have the orange pure, but you can just see it's about mixing the colours together and what happens when you just take the pieces out of it. So I'm just going to show you some better examples of that and do another one. Some I did earlier, I was going to say. So this one was done with the orange first drawn into the background, and then I pressed some leaves in. And then what you can do, because you've picked up some ink from the plate where you press the leaves in, you can then flip them over and put the paper on again and press on them again. So they've picked up little bits from all of the things. And this is just putting the cotton wool bud in some other ink, just making the dots and drawing. And for this one, I kind of wiped the border away around the edge before I put it into the, before I put the paper on top. This one, similar to what I was doing, taking all the colour out of the bird to start with and some of the leaves, but leaving these white marks, you can see these marks, just hold it up a bit more. So this is just where the, the white marks and the colours have picked up on each other. And then I also used the edge of the roller to make some lines in it, lifted some ink with more buds. So that's like one to show you how you can be a bit more precise and get the kind of be. And then this one is actually what I mentioned earlier, it's a ghost print. So I made that print, left the plate as it was, and then just pressed another piece of paper in and just get this rather nice ghostly print off it. And then you could work back on that some more if you wanted to, which um, do that. This is just an abstract one, 
So for this, um, I'll do next, um, I've used some stencils. So you can tear up bits of paper, um, you could put bits of string, only very thin, like almost cotton would work better, and just lay it into the inked up plate, and then take your impression, and then remove the, the pieces of mask, and turn them over again, pick up some colour, and put your second colour on. I'll do this in a minute because it always sounds complicated when you say it, it comes clearer when you do it. And that again, that was a, a ghost print of that one. And that was done in the same way, just pieces of torn paper laid over a second colour. Same for that. Um, those were some very fine string that you just put into and just bits of mask and textured papers used as a mask. It's also quite a lot about um, choosing your colours because you it, orange and turquoise always work very well together because it can become a bit muddy as you saw in that last one that I did because I've got the black mixed in with it. This is just making marks and pieces of mask. Same with that one. You just be very free and abstract with it. Um, this is sort of combining all the, the methods, so it's doing what I did just now, but then it's waiting for it to dry and then putting the um, paper on top of the ink and just defining it by drawing over the back, so I just define the little birds. That, that works quite well. This was... Um, it's sort of similar, but doing it in the plate. So I, I did the background first by lifting and making marks. And then I changed to the black ink and I drew that into the plate and then put it on again with that impression. So you're getting the idea that you can actually go backwards and forwards and do so many different things. It really is a question of just getting stuck in and messing about and working with different... Um, amounts of ink, different pressure that you put on the back, different implements, different sorts of paper. It kind of goes on doing each method, then mixing the methods together. Um, it's kind of endless. So I'm going to just show you another one. Or do, do you want a tea break or anything at this point? Because we're halfway. Any advances on that? <laughs> for me. And no, you can right carry, carry on if you want, so I don't, I don't mind. I do. No, I'm, I'm okay. I'm just wondering if you want to look a break. Or... And as I say, I, I, it, it will not be quite as long as I thought because you're not doing it, so I'll just do a few more demonstrations instead. If you're happy. Yeah, yeah, I reckon carry just carry on. I think work it as a demonstration, I think, yeah. So for this one, I'm just going to, and that's the other thing, you can change your colours the other way around. So I'll do blue first, and that will give you a different, um, a different impression. So I'm just going to try a little bit of this textured paper. I'm not sure where to put in tape. So you can literally just lay papers on top. And papers usually work better. You don't need to worry where anything is on the plate, it's just completely random. And then add to that by
I'm not worrying about being to produce something better than you just want to make sure you got everything. So what you can do is just try one side and just peel back just to see how much you did off it. If you're happy with that, carry on a bit more. Of course at this point, I wasn't going to do this, but you can then at the same time maybe just shading because I can see through the back of the paper to where my masks are. Yeah, that'll come out, but you can just start drawing at the same time. So you can get even more value. That's just a little bit. There's just a little bit of shading there that I did. There's not so much ink left on that now, so come out. So this is what I meant by using these bits again. There's not that much ink on there, but if I turn them round cross them over, get something else again. Quite enough in there to get. You can also use a clean roller on the back to take the impression. You're rolling find the back of your hand, the heel of your hand. So now you can see that's really what mono printing is about. It's starting to, that's from the textured wallpaper because I turned it over and I had ink on it. And this is just picking up the back. Again, it was like that, took the ink, so now it's on the back, made it again. And then on the background, you've still got some nice marks going on that have transferred back again. So that's just using stencils, which is a really simple but effective way. That's great. It is, isn't it? It's great fun using stencils. And it's just really free. You don't have to think about planning any designs, but obviously you could. You could. You could structure it and be really quite precise and cut your stencils out to go exactly where you want them to. So I'm just going to ink this one up again. I'm just going to give that a quick black on. So, as I say, in between um, the same print, if it's the same colour, you don't have to very well. The bit just bits the, with the other colour that might fall into it. <coughs> They're black rollers, you can't really tell what colours on them. Just make sure that you keep them separate. I left it and didn't clean it for a bit, and it's actually pulled some of the uh, it's still got the black on it. Could have cleaned the roller with. <laughs>
And that's another nice thing that's happened that you can do. It wasn't, again, planning that particularly, but if you do that, you've inked your clay up, you wipe away, and then you just ink straight over it. Again, you get these marks showing through. It can be quite nice. Now I can I can lay some more masks over the orange. Or I could just put the orange straight over and not do anything to it at all. I'll just put I won't probably do anything else. Now you can see where the colours have fallen into each other. And these can be used again and because they're oil they'll stay wet for quite some time so you could use those on another print if you want. Or you could keep going back over this one. And I might just try to um, the ghost print with that. Quite on some newsprint because it actually the plate looks quite nice. I'm sure, there's enough in here. That one was. There's quite a bit on that. So now you could start working on that one again. I can link up again and go back over that one. Or I could put a bit more ink on here. Again. So that's another thing that you can do. You can actually put different colour inks on the same plate and you can just roll them in and blend them in and you'll get another result. For that one, I just thought what I might do is put that background back on and just draw through the back. Right, there was too much ink on that one, so that one. If I do one now, and I'm going to take this bird again, see if I can actually just Let's see. So, what you can do is just draw roughly on the back, holding it up just to get a guide of roughly where the bird is.
doing this properly, you had your hinge and make sure in the right place. Offset. And I've just, just tried to define the, the bird and you, you could have driven, drawn much more into it and shaded the background more. So that's an idea for something to do with ghost prints because they're much paler. So that kind of works better than ghost prints. I'm now just going to have a little clean up, if that's okay. Has anyone done anything that they can show? Has anyone produced anything that they can show? Only early on, not this, not this part. No. Do you want to have a go at this part? Should I let you do a little no. Not particularly. I'm no. Not, okay. <laughs> Only if everyone else is. No, no I'm not I, really I, did, I did an early one as well, but it, then it went quite wrong, and I'm not sure <laughs> I want to carry on now. Oh. Why, why did it go wrong for you, maybe? Well, I think, I think I used just acrylic paint first. Oh, oh, just because of the acrylic, yeah. yeah. You haven't got any oil paint to try it with. Well, I, ha I, I did, and it was a little bit more successful. Hmm. Do you want to show it? Do you want to show and tell or not? Yeah, well, if you can see it, because it's just uh, it's one of my uh, figure figure drawings I did. Oh, yeah, yeah. Can you hold it a tiny bit higher? Oh, you have you have got something on that, definitely. And I did a ghost print of it. If you can see it, I think it's quite good. It's got some has got some potential. If you can see it, it's got uh, it's got some nice marks on it. But you, yeah. but then that's the whole thing that. If you keep those, you can work back on them again. And you can obviously use as many colours as you want to, or just stick to one colour, two colours. I mean, it, it, it is pretty endless. Just having a little clean up of my ink and rollers because they've, um, they've got a bit mixed up. I, I mean, my, my uh, acrylic paper is, is completely stuck to the first bit of perspex. Oh dear, I think you'll you just need to soak it in some water and yeah. that, should, that should lift it off. Nice colour, Hume. Eh? Yeah, the oils, the oils were, um, you know, quite a bit, quite a bit better, so I could see, I yeah. think I'd invest in some, I might have a go and invest in some, actually. That's worth it, I mean, it is a, it's a fantastic process, I mean, I'm not, yeah. I don't think I'm doing it full justice here. Putting my rollers in the wrong colour ink. To bear with me because I haven't done a Zoom thing before. So. Well, I'm going to put some equipment on my birthday list for next week. That sounds like a jolly good idea. Yeah, I'll have a go. Well, I would recommend these little SD rollers. If you want to write it down, it's E double S D double E. Right. E double S. E. Yeah, E double S. Yes. D double E. Um, and you get them, I think this is the smallest size they do, which is perfectly adequate because um, you know, I have much larger rollers that I use when I want one smooth roll and I don't want to have any lines. But because you're going in different directions, you can smooth it out quite well. Yes, that's my size. Um, maybe maybe two of these because it just saves having to clean between colours. Yeah. It's a lot easier. Yeah. And yeah. Perspex is quite hard to get hold of because you don't want it to be too thick. If you have a little Google search on it, I, mm. I can't recommend exactly where to get it from, but um, you'll find some. In fact, you might if you go to Great Art or Jackson's or somewhere like that, and you look under printmaking, they might even sell it. Used to. Um, Could you just go to a hardware? Place. Yeah, you, you could. It, it, the trouble is, they tend to sell it in really large, yes. very expensive perspectives. Yes, I've yeah, looked yeah. in B and Q and that. But it's, um, it, is, it is quite pricey. Yeah, you have to buy yeah. sheets, small sheets of it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you can find, if you've got any picture frames that have got perspectives, you could rate those. Yeah. Or um, you could buy some aluminium which um, is used for printmaking as well. I'll just grab a bit to show you. 
I have to have a rake around in my garage. That's just a piece of aluminium. It's, oh. it's very thin. And that, that would work very well. You can actually buy that online. Is, is perspex better than glass? Well, it's safer. Oh. Because sometimes when you're rolling, and if you do it quite hard, it could crack the glass. It uh -huh. probably would be fine. Um, and also, in case the glass has got sharp edges. I don't know if you've, you've got any very smooth tiles. That would work. Um, and as I said at the beginning, if you um, you could try. Oh, it's just started pouring with me. Um, you could try getting some very firm card and wrapping. Um, you could try greaseproof paper around it. You'd have to wrap it around very tightly and tape it all underneath. You could try rolling out on that. Mm. That, that might work. I, I mean, I haven't tried these things, but, but it's worth a go. Um, and I did read that you could use cling film for it as well. But that's, you would get textures in it. But that could be quite nice. So if you used a tile, I was thinking you could use an, uh, um, an odd, large, white tile, smooth yes. tile. But the that, only that thing is best. that the ink will be absorbed into the other, you know, the plaster that it's made of. Um, it should be all right if it's a shiny tile. Yeah. You know, you, know, you said about the paper, Anne. Um, there was some sort of greaseproof paper, I think some sort of kitchen roll mm -hmm. paper that I bought uh, to do something. Um, and it was sort of shiny on one side and not on the other. And the shiny side, if it was, um, you know, wrapped around sellotape, round a board, worked really well. Yes, yes, that's the sort of thing you want. I mean, I yeah. have even, I've got a greaseproof paper, which is a kind of, it's thicker than the normal sort. I don't know what it's called. It's it shiny is. on yeah. oh, like kitchen paper or something it was called. Yeah, but it, yeah. it needs, yeah, it, as long as it's not a porous. No, no, it was shiny on one side. Yeah, yeah. It's something that will just, um, you know, not let the ink sink into the place. Right, yeah. So, and the other question um, I had was, you mentioned some things that you could add to oil paint to make it into yeah. a sort of ink. What a medium? What was that? I'd have to um, look that up again because I don't oh, right. remember the name of it, but I can okay. find that out for you. Um, yeah. there's, there's also one that you can add to acrylics, which is well, it just depends oh, yeah. on drying time, and that would work. Yeah, I just um, thought, I just thought, thought for the group if they want to try it without yeah. buying printing ink, yes, they yeah. could try the. I like the idea. I mean, I've got loads of ink, um, all different sorts, hmm. um, but I've never actually thought of adding anything to oil hmm. or acrylic. But it could help if, if you, especially if you've got a lot of acrylics. You want to use up, you Absolutely, know. Absolutely, yeah. And if they're yeah. probably a little bit dry as well, this yeah. um, that, that could help with them. But then, Hume, you, you said the oils did work. Well, you you did get a decent result with it, or just yeah. oil on its own, didn't you? Yeah, so that's, just oil, just yeah. Oil, I yeah. used oil at work. Yeah. So maybe you don't need the, anything to go with the oil. It's probably yeah. okay. <laughs> Can I ask you a question about finished paper? Yeah. Um, you're suggesting we use photocopy paper, but if you're doing a, like you do professionally... Oh no, you couldn't use it for that. No. What paper do you use? Um, well, I tend to, I usually monoprint through my press, so I use a heavier paper. Ah, so you but need I a press, I found that yeah. heavier yeah. papers don't really work that well when you're doing it by hand, because you can't get the pressure through them. Yes. Yes, but yes, if I'm you sure. use um, a thinner, um, smooth watercolour paper, I find something very smooth, so you want um, hot pressed paper, um, and and just maybe about ninety, hundred, enough. I mean, I, or a drawing paper, a smooth drawing paper, that would also work. 
Yeah, yeah. cartridge pack would be fine. Just something thinner. Um, but I, if you're I, not I, using the press, you've got to. You can't use those people. You can the ones I've just mentioned. Oh, nothing, sorry, I've got nothing, wrong yeah. sorry. <laughs> No, what I meant was you can't use the heavier papers. No. So the only one I've tried, and I, I did get some results. So this is a heavier paper. This is so. Probably about two hundred or so, and that that did come out. That was. Um, but can you see you get a much more sort of speckly? Yeah. You don't get the inks lying as flat as you would on a smoother, thinner paper. Yes, thank you. So compared to that one, they are, you know, they're lying a bit flatter and a bit smoother and a bit brighter. So it, it's actually, a lot of it is experimenting with, with what you've got to start with. I would just suggest, you know, most artists have got loads of paper lying around for different things. <laughs> just use up stuff that you've got, you know, that you don't, you're not really using for anything, can just try them out. Um, and then if you like it, invest in some thinner papers. So um, then, if there's no more questions, I'll do another, I'll just do another one. Different. <clears throat> Have you ever mixed um, print with painting? You know, a sort of you start off with it as a print and then you start yeah, painting. Yeah, I, I don't tend to do that myself, but that's definitely something you can do, and especially with these, you know, anything that you've got, like Hume, you had the ghosty one that you did, or so you could start enhancing that just by using some pastels maybe and um, just working on top of it because they do make really nice backgrounds. Yes. And the, the other thing was like in figure drawing, you could just make up some nice abstract backgrounds, paler, so don't put too much ink. And then you could just draw over the top, do figure drawing over the top, and that would work really well. Um, yeah, yeah. Or do your figure drawing directly onto the back of the paper, ink it, and then lay it down and figure draw on the back. That would work really nice. So I think this method does work for drawing, actually. Yes, so there's a lot of lines going through. Yes, I can see the potential for that actually. Yeah, I actually used I actually used a stickle brick where I used to teach little children for some of the background. I make some quite good textures mm. around the figure. That I truly yeah, yeah, that's well, that's definitely. I mean, anything that you can think of that's textured that would lift yeah. the ink off and leave nice marks. Right. Yeah. I mean, I just suggest literally just getting loads of scrap paper inking up your plates and just making loads of marks and textures and then just looking at what you like and narrowing it down because obviously there's a tendency to use too many. It's a bit messy and blurred. Yeah. But you get to know what you like. So I'm just going to do another one with, which is one of my favourite. Rag wiping marks. Just making nice marks in the rags. And then you can sort of scrunch it up a bit. I'm doing the vacuuming. Yeah. Hmm? Okay, I'll try some different paper for this one just to show you. These ones are the white light. Oh, they're Russian. Okay. Russian. 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 They're bright, but they're quite, they're very, um, watery. And we need to do something here, which is very... So this is just a thin drawing paper. Nothing special, but it is a drawing paper, so it's a bit better than the spread. Oh. 
Isn't it to mute, please? So who's put the hoover on? <laughs> I'll mute you. <laughs> Should all be muted now. So, using this paper, it doesn't, um, sorry. You can see it doesn't pick up the ink as much as the shinier photocopier paper. You get kind of more texture in it, but that's quite nice. So, you want to keep it like that. It's quite a nice way of doing this. So obviously before I was using two plates, but you've only got one, and you can just clean it in between the colours. And if you're using white spirit to clean your oils, you don't want to put too much on the plate because it does leave a film to kind of get the white spirit off it quite well. Remember what I was saying about listening to the ink as you're rolling. It sounded really, really sticky. You've got far too much ink. So this one I'm just going to do with some white marks alone. Yeah. Just press some textures in. And even if you haven't got your design drawn onto it, you've got that mirror image. So I know that this line being roughly here is the whole idea of monoprinting is where you've wiped away one colour, the second colour will fill that space. And where it crosses over, will mix and make nice mark. Just see if I can. Because that paper is very embossed, it does really nicely. And I might just actually lay that back on. I'll get something from that. And old socks make very good wiping. Mm. You have old socks. You can kind of put your hand in it, just make a really nice wiping. wiping glove. Again, you've got some nice um, crossing over marks. So that was where I turned <clears throat> this little piece of 
flew over in those marks, which then laid over the blue from underneath. And then I could use that again if I wanted to. The other thing you can do is just take the edge of the roller where it's got some ink on it. You can either just go directly onto the into the paper. Just make those nice lines with the upper or you can onto the plate. Be very free with them. If that would pick up as well. If I move that nearer, you can see those lines. And that's just using the edge of the roller. You can do all sorts of nice things with that. And again, with figure drawing, you could you could almost just draw with the edge of the roller. The prints from that. Just do one like that. You, you could also, um, well, in printmaking, it's transparency medium that you add to it or an extender so you could use the equivalent in oils and that will make your colour paler you could build up the layers more paler colours I'd meant to do something else. There. So, the, or the, if you're doing light drawing, you can just pick your plate up and then just put it on a board, and you can just draw direct, just draw your figure directly onto it, and maybe do some little wipings, and then take an impression of it. That would work really well. I've forgotten what I was going to say. So if you want to sort of almost do it all in one, have two rollers to colour inks and just put the colour on all in one go. You'll get a different.
if you are using gloves, a very good tip is to put a little bit of talcum powder inside them and they become off a lot easier. You've sort of got lots of colours in one print and it is quite nice to leave the white marks in some of them. I'm just going to go over it again. I'm going to make this the last one and I'm going to show you some more examples. I'm not going to bother keeping the plate bit of extra colour on. With this one, I'm going to try dragging it on. So I've let a lot more ink stay on that. And you can see the raggy textures in the background that have just come through, and just the, the line marks. So obviously I'm not planning any of these. This is really just to show you textures. Not my best one. I'm going to unmute you now. So you can all unmute yourselves now if you want to. So is there any more questions? Can you, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can, yeah. <laughs> We're so enthralled, obviously. No, but that's very, that was very good. Um, very I'm, impressive. I'm, I'm just going to. Um, I just really. Okay. Sorry. These are really interesting, and um, to see you actually, you know, in the process. That's the that's the thing because uh, when you're actually working with monoprints, you're never quite sure the results. You're going yeah. to get, I mean, you said you haven't planned it, and you said it's not your best work. Well, it is your work, and um, even if you only use those pieces of paper as demonstrations afterwards, it's the creative process. Yeah, I it's mean, it's to give you an idea. It gives you an to... idea, and, yeah. you know, the. I always feel things like that have a sort of natural um, speed and projection to them and you, you might do a few of those don't yeah. give up and carry on and eventually you know you might produce landscapes or Absolutely. Uh, flowerscapes or bodyscapes Absolutely, I mean my, I'm, I'm a landscape artist Yeah, you know, I mean I, I, you could do figures, flowers, whatever but the, the point is 
unless you actually see the process, unless yeah. people, the artists here, understand that you can, well, virtually try anything. It is all very experimental. It is, and once, and as I say, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to show you as many marks as I possibly can, which is why... Yes, I'm wonderful. Thinking. Thank you very much. Anything, but um, yeah. once, you, once you discover, and, and it is very much a process that it clicks as you do it, so I know I've told you a lot of stuff which probably... You know, you remember. I can't remember everything. No, because you have to actually do it, and then it kind of clicks in place, and you and you sort of realise the. But it is a very unique process. It's very different from painting. Because and the other thing, of course, that you can do is you can just paint directly onto the plate and take a, an impression, which you might think, what's the point in that? But it will look very different from a painting. It's being transferred in that way. So I was just going to finish by showing you. Just trying to get a bit cleaner here for a minute. I find the um, stencils interesting. Um, you tore out stencils, but you can actually cut. You know, you can cut, cut your own shapes and absolutely. And oh, and the other thing I forgot. Uh, card. Um, you can use lots of plants, leaves, and, yes. and stuff like that. You don't want them to be too wet, but you don't want them to be too dry because they'll crumble. You just need to pick them. Just sort of. You know, maybe pick them the day before and then use them, but not dry them out. I'm just going to clear a space so I can show you some examples of uh, work that I've done on the press. Uh, well, yes. Sorry. Yeah, of course. Okay, you had, um, just before you wiped it off, you used a very nice effect on the glass that looked like jungle. Looked like what, sorry? It looked like jungle. Okay. You put, you put green on. Oh, I just cleaned that off. off. Yeah. And they look like jungle. Mm. So I wanted to ask you how you would produce that so that it carried on looking like jungle. Because it didn't um, look like jungle when it, when it was printed off. Um, maybe on that one it would have been good to take another print off it. So I took the first print and if you said it didn't look very jungly on that, that first print. Yeah. Uh, because you sometimes pick up more marks. From the second one because there's not as much ink on it so you can see the marks a bit clearer so that's probably what i'd mess about with i i'd make those sort of marks which i think i did with the rag just ragging it off and then you just need yeah. to experiment with how much ink you're taking off how much is because it's very um you know i can't tell you a precise amount of ink it, it depends yeah. on the effect that you want you really yeah. have to mess about with how much you lift off the plate yeah. And that, that, by the way, that was also called the reductive method in either side. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Now, I'll just show you some that um, these have been done on the press, actually. I'll just switch to my other, I'll switch back to the, the other mode. Photocopies because I did sell these ones. Upside down. Okay. So I'm turning it round for the camera. Yeah. Lovely. So that I've just obviously seen the method behind it now, hopefully, that I've just wiped away lots of different bits in the background, put another colour on, wiped again. Here is it, I'll hold it up a bit more. There's a little bit of bubble wrap in there. Press. Yeah. And then I've turned it over and drawn through the back to define the flowers over it. And I, I like that method where you can just draw back and define things. This is without defining, that's just... Um, and these marks in the background are made by flipping white spirit on it because it just breaks the ink down. You get those lovely little marks. And these are all lovely, they're all white marks. They're where you've wiped one colour. This one goes and you wipe again and they kind of cross over and do really nice things. This was just a, it's a demo one, so that's just using, being more precise, just using two solid colours. But you can see where the colours have crossed. They love the colours now. Yeah. Awesome. And this is, 
That's just putting little bits of uh, paper torn up, wiping the lines in. And that's only that's only two colours, just the green and the sort of turns round. Somebody's hoovering again. The paper. Well, I'm one, um, this was using leaves, but they're, they're those um, almost fabric ones, the dried ones with the veins in. So they work really nicely. This was uh, speckling with white spirit. Some of these, I could never even tell you how I did them because you're turning round and looking all the time. Love that the colours. It came from that one. So it's oh, yes. Nice. So quite abstract. Again, mainly using stencils and wiping. I'm just going to try and get my um, camera to zoom in a little bit. On this. Can. Not working. I want to do it. Um, and hold it up a little bit. Does that help? See that a bit better? Yes, yeah. it's good, yeah. That's really nice. And then, and then of course, you could be more, much more precise with them. That's right. And then, so that would have taken a lot longer and more than that. Sorry, I keep putting the wrong one up. Nice. That's great. And you can get lovely highlights, you know, from water by wiping away. What was the colour of red that you ink that you put on the on um, the perspex, and then when you rubbed it off, it yeah. went yellow. Oh well, it's actually a cadmium deep yellow. Oh. So underneath, it's got the yellowy residue. So it's darker when you put a lot more on. Oh. So it's, I mean, it is that colour. That was lovely. If you spray it, I've got any, if I do them, um, that paper's too absorbent, but you can see it goes a bit lighter. It's got the yellow. I it love is, it. It's really a yellow. Ah. It's got so much ink in the way. So this is, that's another one. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's nice. Like that. And again, that's using the white spirit to kind of make the crashy wave. And another, this this was just stencils and turning the stencils over, picking up the colour from the back. Mm, that's nice. That's also about just making marks in you to create the waves. The birds are drawn on afterwards, so that, that's as much as I ever add to my life. It's nice. Mm. Again, most of these marks are made from wiping. I sometimes use, that's how I've done this one, I use lots of those little rollers and I just kind of ink on different colours at the same time and wipe them back, go over and over. And how have you done this too? Um, again, it's um, just drawn into. So all of those, is that close? Oh, that, yes. They're all just drawn into with the back of a pen or pencil. Just a mm. Sometimes with that, I might have masked out the canaries so I can get the pure yellow to go. In. But the, these are the sort. Of, these are the sort of marks that are lovely to me. Mm, yeah. Oh, and this this one, it was just the star. I didn't do much with it, but that's just pressing um, textured water into it, lifting it off to get those floral. 
Mm. And that's also got which you can do. It's called a blend roll. You can put two colours on the roller. You just you just put a little bit of ink one side and a bit the other, and just roll it out smoothly, and you'll get that nice blend of colours going down. Mm. It's a very old one, another abstract, but it shows you some nice marks. I like that, it's good. Very nice. You'll be able to see this one as well. That's the kind of more simple, well, it wasn't simple to do, but I have used more pure colours. That's, that's some of my work. No, that's all done on the press there, so you do get um, quite a different effect on the press. As you can is it smoother? The, is the effect smoother? Yeah, you, you just get a much more intense colour um, because of the pressure, really. So you, you, were there block prints? Huh? Were there block block prints on the press? Um, what do you mean block? I mean, were there lino cuts? No, they were all monoprints that I did. Oh, all monoprints. Yeah, yeah they were all monoprints so on a perspex plate. Exactly the same methods as I've been showing you. And so doesn't the ink run out over the edges? Some yeah. It's yeah. exactly the same method. It's just yeah. that each time you put a colour on, instead of instead of me hand pressing the back, I'm running it through the press. Oh, right. Of putting another colour on cleaning the plate in between another colour through the press. So sometimes I can go through the press about eight, nine times. Oh, right. I've got different areas and sometimes the whole lot. I've got, I've got a little book press, small yeah, one. That probably would... You could do that. that. That comes down straight. Yeah, yeah. I use an etching press, but a book press will... Yeah, that, that should work, actually. I've never thought of doing a monoprint. I've done colour mm. graphs that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I think, I think a monoprint. Um, oh, okay. You know, I usually like laboriously rubbing and <laughs> stamp no, on it. I mean, you can go on. I mean, some of those ones that I showed you, like this one, uh, that would have taken me a whole day. Wow. I mean, I would have had two on the go, so I've got another one of these. But I, well, actually, I probably would have had four on the go, because I do take ghost prints and work up, so mm -hmm. sometimes I'm working with a few at the same time. But then I get probably two good ones out, out of that. So, yeah, it's a whole day. And I use huge rollers as well. Behind me. I'll show you. Well, this is such a... Oh, that's what I'm using these really large rollers to roll out. Ah. Very carefully. Another one I'm not going to bring over because mm -hmm. it's about twice as thick as that. So you can get the two colours on the roll and you can blend it. Wow. Um, and can you tell us about your classes? So I do one day workshops. Mm. Um, obviously, <laughs> I'm having to remember because I haven't done one for such a long time. I know. Um, so, um, I think they are £75 for the day. Um, it's all on my website. Okay. Um, What's your website? I mean, www.annburnham without, and without any. Yeah. .co.uk. Okay, because, um, you know, I used to run those classes up at Bushy. Yes. I don't yeah. coach anymore. Uh, mm. but my husband Roy used to go to the classes, mm. partly as my helper, obviously, with the paper and all that. But mm. he was talking about maybe being interested and wondering if you were going to start up again. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing, I do, well, I was doing regular um, once a week half day classes, mm. both Thursday morning and Saturday morning. And I did, a, I resumed a few last summer, and I'm, I'm starting them again next week, but I'm not doing them. In ten week terms because it's still all so uncertain. I'm just I know. Know what and when. So I, I am starting them again. Um, so can he contact you if he? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I would probably say a one day workshop might be the best thing. Yeah, probably. 
do. So, so I, I do those when I've kind of got enough people that want to do it on a certain date. Because I, I, I sort of stopped doing them even before COVID because I, I don't really advertise at all. I just do it word of mouth. And I didn't do as many last year. But, um, well, Sue, Sue came to your things, didn't she? Sue, Sue. comes to my Saturday. Yes. She comes, well, she did come regularly to my Saturday classes, but... I was going to come, but then I started my own classes on Saturday, so I was was considering it, actually. If you do a one-day workshop and another time, yeah, that's possible. If if there's enough of you together that want to do one, then I can can do one and tailor it to what you want to do. Um, I only have a maximum of four people, because although my studio is quite big, I don't like to... um, well, maybe we could get together four people. Yeah, yeah. that would be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'd be me, up for that. Roy, that's three already. Three already. Yeah. Well, I would do it for three of you if there isn't. Um, that's the minimum I'd do is three. Yeah. Of you. But yeah, just just email me with some dates. Okay. Um, yeah. And we can take and have a look at my website because all the information's on there. I'm yeah. not quite sure if it's. I don't know if it's up to date, price wise. No. So what would you, would you run something in terms of, if you had something already ready, so like if Roy had a cut, you know, a lino cut or something, or would it have to be a monoprint? Or? Well, it depends. I would, I would do what, I mean, I do at the moment, I, they tend to be a, monish, a monoprint workshop day. Okay. Or a conograph day. Or oh, a lino cut day. But, um, you know, I can, I can tailor it. I mean, I usually do just do one thing on with everybody doing the same thing because it gets a bit yeah complicated yeah yeah so you know it could either be mono print or lino cut or conograph because conograph is great fun too i love it i mean the problem i have with conographs is that very often my plate looks more interesting than the print well unfortunately (laughs) they do have a tendency to do that yes (laughs) and especially without a press yeah, yeah. What is conograph? There you go. It's where you. Uh, hang on, let me just get a plate to show you. made up of so this is just mount board it's quite a thick mount board and these are all little tiny bits of well those are wallpapers textured papers and glues <coughs> and these bits are made of glue and then you can tear away the card which gives you a really lovely texture and you just so a collagraph is part it says it's collage and graph so it's oh, size into the card and sticking things on top and then you cover the whole thing with ink, you scrub ink into the whole plate, and then you wipe it off. You wipe off a lot of ink, put it through the press. I don't have them, um, I don't have one of these to hand to show you. It's slightly like an etching, but it's you the, get sort of raised, little raised areas. Yeah, so, um, texture, a lot about it's very, very textured. So, in tagio printing, it's when, um, when the ink goes below the surface. It goes down, so that's dry point and connection. And um, sorry, I, I've suddenly my brain suddenly just stopped and went dead. <laughs> Relief printing. So Relief is the one where you just roll onto the surface, and this is a combination of both. So you, you roll on, the, it goes on the surface, and it goes underneath another effect. I don't do it on the glass much, and I don't think I've got any examples to show you. That was a nice effect, the one you yeah. showed us. C O double L either A or O G A G R A K P H collar graph. Collar or collo. It's spelled different ways. And I do workshops in that as well. So um, I can send um Hume a, a um Look. a what's it, not a worksheet, what do you call them? <laughs> I could, sorry, my I've suddenly my brain stopped. So, so, uh, schedule? Yeah, a, a program. Program. I think you need a cup of tea. Um. Yeah. 
<laughs> yes. My voice is going. So <laughs> We're talking I'll send it to you. I'll send you that on my website yeah. address and um, then you can post uh, it on that. I hope you enjoy it. Like it, instructions. Yeah. Um, a summary of what we've done. So. A summary, yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, of course. Yes, you do that. Could yeah, you that, send that'd be me good, a actually. copy, yes, please. please. Yeah. Could you no, send me a really copy? Good. It was very good. Thank you for bearing with me on the technicalities. Yeah. Done that before. Can you send me a copy so I can use it in the magazine, please? Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. We can send it to any one of us on the. We can send it to me and I'll send yeah, it like around the group if you want. Yeah. That's another summary. Yeah. yeah. It yeah, distribute it to yeah. Thank you, Anne. That's wonderful. Okay. Thank you very much. Mm. Take care. Take care all of you. Lo lovely, <laughs> lovely <laughs> workshop. Very interesting. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anne. Thank you. Bye. 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 bye.